Okay, so welcome to part four uh, in the proof of the separability of LP spaces. Okay, uh, so at the moment, uh, even though I said we were going to try and keep it general, I lied. Um, at the moment, this proof is going to work uh, for real LP spaces. For complex LP spaces, you will have to alter these TNs slightly, and you'll have to alter your S. So, uh, the TNs here, these TNs, well, instead of taking rational numbers, they'll have to take Gaussian numbers. Uh, so remember, a Gaussian number is a complex number where both the real and imaginary components are uh, rational numbers. Uh, so you'll have to take uh, sequences of Gaussian numbers up to the nth term and then zeros afterwards. And then you'll have to let S be the union of all of those. And again, these TNs will be countable for very similar arguments because Gaussian numbers are countable. And we'll, we'll go over this again at the uh, end of the video where we generalise the concept to, um, to um, complex LP spaces. But for now, for now, uh, let's just work with the uh, real case where we're just dealing with rational numbers in the um, TNs. Okay, so what we now want to do is we want to show that S, uh, S, which is this union, uh, this countable union of these sets TNs, we want to show that this is uh, dense in LP where we're viewing LP as a real LP space, so uh, the sequences are of sequences of real numbers. Okay, and the way we're going to do that is, firstly, let's consider what we want to do. Well, what do we have to do to um, show that it's dense? We have to show that, take any sequence x, let's say x is equal to some sequence, x1, x2, uh, so all, all the way on, uh, which is an element of LP, we need to show that uh, inside the ball, centre the x of radius epsilon, there is a point of s inside that ball. Whatever epsilon you give me, I can find you a point in s, which is a distance from x less than epsilon, is basically another way of stating that. Okay, so, because, let's begin that. So that's, uh, because x is an element of LP, it implies, so x being an element of LP, implies uh, that the sum uh, from i is equal to 1 to infinity of the modulus of xi to the power of p is some finite value. So let's just call that uh, finite value mx, the sum, uh, so this is just, I don't know why I'm using that notation, but mx um, is just this finite value which this is converging on. Now the meaning of saying that this converges to this is uh, to say uh, that uh, the limit of the partial sums converges to that. So the limit as n approaches infinity of the sequence of partial sums, i is equal to 1 to n of the modulus of xi to the power of p, is equal to mx. Now, this is a monotonically increasing sequence because when you go to the term n plus 1, uh, you are adding on x to the n plus 1 to the power of p. Now, the mod that is a modulus to the power of p. So, the modulus is a non-negative number. When you take it to the power of p, it's still a non-negative number. So, you are adding on a non-negative number. So, the next term in the sequence is going to get bigger. So, the sequence is monotonically increasing. So, to draw a picture, um, the sequence is getting bigger and 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 converging to this value mx. Okay, and the meaning of saying that this converges to this value mx is uh, to say that for all... Uh, for all the epsilon greater than zero, there exists some big N, which is an element of the natural numbers, such that if little n is greater than or equal to big N, it implies uh, that uh, the distance, the um, which in this case is, uh, because we're talking about real numbers, so we're talking about the modulus, um, the modulus of mx minus uh, this term, uh, which the term in the sequence, which is this sum, i is equal to 1 to n, of the modulus of xi to the power of p, the distance, the modulus of between them, is less than epsilon. Okay, uh, so basically what this says is that you give me an epsilon, I can find you a point, a big N, in this, in this, uh, in this sequence of partial sums, after which the dist after well for that big n and after that big n the distance between mx and that epsilon is uh, that, sorry that the distance between mx and that um, that sum that uh, term of the sequence is less than epsilon okay uh, so 
uh, just take this big N, basically. I don't care about the fact that all of the ones after that as well uh, satisfy this. I just want a single one. So, there exists some big N is an element of the natural numbers such that um, if I take the sum, i is equal to 1 to big N of, of the modulus of xi to the power of p, and I take that away from mx, and then I take the modulus of that, um, and because it's a monotonically increasing sequence, you can drop that um, modulus, because it's always going to be positive, because mx is always going to be greater than this uh, partial sum. That's going to be less than epsilon, so I can make this difference as small as I like, and all I have to do is uh, find you some new big N, basically. Okay, I'm just going to uh, have to pause the video here because we've run out of paper and I have no more paper. Um, in the next video, we'll use this to um, show what we need to show, that this set is in fact dense.